Material of its daily use. Clothes. Clothes are necessary for us. Clothes protect the body against heat, cold, rain, dust and insects. We all like to look smart and well dressed. Clothes help us to do so. Neat, tidy and comfortable clothes also contribute to good health. We must dress according to latest fashions and customs, but our clothes should never be too tight. The clothes should be loose enough to allow free movement and growth of the body. Kinds of clothes Cotton clothes absorb sweat easily and do not irritate the skin. Cambric, poplin and khadi are best during summer. We should wear white or light colored clothes in summer because these clothes reflect the external heat and do not get heated. People living in very cold countries wear clothes made from the fur and skin of animals in order to keep themselves warm. In winter, we all wear woolen clothes, jerseys, coats, etc. These keep the body warm by not allowing the body heat to escape. Leather jackets also keep the body warm. Dark colored clothes are worn in winter because they absorb the heat and become warm. Materials for making clothes. Clothes are made from thread, which is obtained from natural or artificial fibers. The common material are cotton, silk, wool, nylon and other synthetic artificial fibers. First, the fibers are made, that is, spun into the threads and later they are woven into cloth with help of looms or weaving machines. Cotton is obtained from the cotton plant. Linen is obtained from the flax plant. Silk is obtained from the cocoons that the silkworms are commonly found on mulberry trees. Wool is obtained from the fur of animals like sheep, camels and goats. The woolen fibers are spun into woolen cloth. Scientists have developed many kinds of artificial fibers like rayon, nylon, decron and terylene. These are called synthetic fibers. Synthetic fibers are stronger than natural fibers. So, nylon, decron and terylene clothes are more durable than cotton clothes. They dry very quickly and also do not get wrinkled. But, synthetic cloth is non-porous and therefore should not be worn during summer season because neither does it absorb the sweat nor does it allow the body heat to escape. Knitting Have you noticed how sweaters are knitted? In knitting, a single yarn is used to make a piece of fabric. Have you ever pulled the yarn from a torn piece of socks? What happens? A single yarn gets pulled out as the fabric gets unraveled. Socks and many other clothing items are made of knitted fabrics. Knitting is done by hand and also on machines. Advantages and Disadvantages of Natural Fibers Advantages These have the property of retaining our body's heat. Disadvantage They do not retain their creases for long. Cotton clothes allow sweat to pass through them in hot and humid weather from our body. They may shrink on ordinary washing. The cotton fabrics are comfortable for summer. They are attacked by moths and moles. Natural silk is very expensive and they do not dry rapidly. Advantages and disadvantages of synthetic fibers. Advantages. They are strong. They are crease resistant. They are not attacked by moths and moles. They are easy to wash and maintain. They dry up more quickly. They come in very attractive colors and prints. The disadvantages. They do not allow air to pass through them and hence are not good for summer. They do not absorb sweat as well as natural fibers do. They get damaged by high temperature when ironed. They catch fire more easily than cotton or wool. Properties of materials 
collect small pieces of different materials, paper, cardboard, wood, copper wire, aluminium sheet, chalk. Do any of these appear shiny? Separate the shiny materials into a group. Now, observe as the teacher cuts material into two pieces and look at the freshly cut surface. What do you notice? Does the freshly cut surface of some of these materials appear shiny? Include these objects also in the group of shiny materials. Do you notice such a shine or lustre in the other materials? Cut them any ways as you can. Repeat this in the class with as many materials as possible and make a list of those with and without lustre. Instead of cutting, you can rub the surface of material with sandpaper to see if it has lustre. Objects may float or sink in water. Some of these materials that did not mix with water floated to the surface of water. Others may have sunk to the bottom of the tumbler, right? We notice many examples of objects that float in water or sink. Dried leaves fallen on the surface of a pond. A stone that you throw into this pond. Few drops of honey that you let fall into a glass of water. Transparency. Those substances or materials through which things can be seen are called transparent. Glass, water, air and some plastics are examples of transparent materials. Shopkeepers usually prefer to keep biscuits, sweets and other eatables in transparent containers of glass or plastic so that buyers can easily see these items. On the other hand, there are some materials through which you are not able to see. Those materials are called opaque. You cannot tell what is kept in a closed wooden box, a cardboard carton or a metal container. Wood, cardboard and metals are examples of opaque materials. Translucent. Take a sheet of paper and look through it towards a lighted bulb. Make a note of your observation. Now, put two to three drops of some oil and spread it on the sheet of paper. Look again towards the lighted bulb through that portion of the paper on which the oil has been spread. Do you find that the bulb is more clearly visible than before? But you can see clearly through the oiled paper. Is everything on the other side of it visible? Perhaps not. The materials through which objects can be seen, but not clearly, are known as translucent. Physical properties of substances are given in the table above. Classification of changes. Changes can be classified into the following five categories. Slow and fast changes, reversible and irreversible changes, natural and man-made changes, periodic and non-periodic changes, physical and chemical changes, slow and fast changes. Some changes occur very slowly. These slow changes may take hours, days, months or years. Rusting of iron in moist air, growing of a plant from its seeding, ripening of fruits on plants, changing milk into curd are a few examples of a slow change. Reversible and irreversible changes. If a change can be reversed, it is called a reversible change. Here, the products after change can be transformed to their original form. For example, ice changes into water on heating, whereas water changes into ice on cooling. Thus, this change is a reversible change. If a change cannot be reversed, it is called an irreversible change. Here, the products cannot be changed to their original form. Burning of coal grinding maize grain into flour, falling of leaves from the tree, aging are few examples of irreversible change, natural and man-made changes. The changes which are brought about by nature itself are called natural changes. 
these changes are beyond the control of man. Changes of season, tides in the sea, aging of plants, landslides are a few examples of natural changes. The changes which are brought about by man are called man-made changes. These changes are under the control of man. Formation of curd, burning of fuels, cutting nails, switching on an electric fan are some examples of man-made changes. Periodic and non-periodic changes. Periodic changes are events that repeat themselves after a certain amount of time. The Earth's rotation on its axis, the Earth's revolution around the Sun, and hence day and night, all season, are examples of periodic changes. Changes that do not occur again after a specific amount of time are called non-periodic changes. If there is an earthquake or volcanic eruption today, the next cannot be predicted. Such changes are called non-periodic changes. Sedimentation When the heavier component in a mixture settles after water is added to it, the process is called sedimentation. When the water along with the dust is removed, the process is called decantation. Proof that dissolving of sugar in water is a physical change. Dissolve some sugar crystals in water. The water becomes sweet in taste, which shows that the molecules of sugar are still present in water. Evaporate the sugar solution in a china dish, over a Bunsen burner or a spirit lamp. A white residue is obtained in the china dish, as shown in the figure. All the properties of this residue are identical to sugar, which was earlier dissolved in water. Thus we find that in this case, no new substance is formed. Hence, dissolving of sugar in water is a physical change. Proof that heating of wax is also a physical change. Take some wax in a china dish and heat over a flame as shown in figure. You will notice that on heating, wax changes its state from solid to liquid. Now, remove the china dish from the flame and allow it to cool. What do you see? Is there any change in the wax? It has again changed its state from liquid to solid, but there is no observable change in the properties. Hence, we can conclude that heating of wax is a physical change because no new substance is found. Could there be other ways to bring a change? The iron blade of these tools has a ring in which the wooden handle is fixed. Normally, the ring is slightly smaller in size than the wooden handle. To fix the handle, the ring is heated and it becomes slightly larger in size, expands. Now, the handle easily fits into the ring. When the ring cools down, it contracts and fits tightly on the handle. Reaction involved during a physical change are shown below. No new substance is formed. The change is temporary. The change can be reserved on withdrawing the agent which causes change. The composition of the matter remains unaltered. There may be some changes in physical properties such as state, color, smell, etc. Dissolution, precipitation, evaporation, condensation, freezing, melting and sublimation are some of the other examples of the means of physical changes. Chemical changes. Burning of paper is a chemical change. Take one paper sheet and burn it over a flame. You will notice that it burns rapidly, leaving behind a black colored ash. Is the property of ash similar to paper? Can you obtain paper in its original form from this ash? Certainly, your answer will be in the negative. What does this confirm? This activity proves that burning of paper is chemical change. Opening of bud is a chemical change. Observe a few buds on a plant in your surrounding for a few days. Buds may give rise to flower. Once the flower is formed from the bud, it is not possible to reverse the process. It is concluded that opening of bud is a chemical change. Results of a chemical change 
are as follows. Entirely, a new substance is formed. The change is permanent. The change is irreversible. Change in the composition and properties of the substances take place. Heat or light may be given out or absorbed. Rusting, burning of fuel, curdling of milk, cooking of food and fermentation are other examples of chemical changes. Difference between physical and chemical changes are tabulated as shown. Changes involve interaction. Almost all changes around us involve two or more materials which interact with each other during the change. Burning of a matchstick by striking on the sides of a matchbox. The matchstick burns as well as a mark is left on the matchbox. Therefore, the change or interaction has influenced each other. Absorption or evolution of energy during a change. Burning of coal, wood, candle, gas, etc. gives out heat and light. Water changes into its vapor when it is heated. Water, when cooled, can be changed into ice. In all these changes, some heat is either absorbed or evolved. There are some changes during which heat is released. Such changes are called exothermic changes. There are some other changes during which heat is absorbed. Melting of ice, dissolution of common salt in water, etc. are a few examples in which heat is absorbed. Such changes are called endothermic change solutions. Solution is a homogeneous mixture of one or more substances. The solute dissolved in another substance, the solvent. The major component is called solvent and the minor component is called solute. Types of solution. Saturated solution. A solution is said to be saturated when a solvent can dissolve no more of a solute at a particular temperature. Unsaturated solution. A solution is said to be unsaturated when it is capable of dissolving more of solute than it already contains at the same temperature. Supersaturated solutions. A solution is said to be saturated when it contains more of the solute than could be dissolved by the solvent under normal conditions. Carbonated water and beer are the example of supersaturated solutions. Solubility. The maximum amount of a solute that can be dissolved in a given quantity of the solvent at a given temperature and pressure is defined as the solubility. The solubility in water is usually expressed in milliliters per 100 milliliters of water. The solubility of ammonium chloride in water at 20 degrees centigrade is 37.2 grams per 100 milliliters of water. This means that 37.2 grams of ammonium chloride can be dissolved in 100 ml of water at 20 degrees centigrade. Solubility of salt. Take some water in a cup. Weigh common salt on a balance in the laboratory. Now, add some common salt in the cup. Stir the contents. Go on repeating the process till the salt dissolves in water. Keep recording the weight of common salt used. A time will come when additional common salt may settle down at the bottom of the cup. This is the end point. Now, record your findings by adding the total weight of common salt used. You have prepared a saturated solution of common salt in water. Factors affecting solubility. There are mainly two factors which affect the solubility even within the same solution. Temperature and pressure. Effect of temperature on solubility. The solubility of solid in liquid increases with increase in temperature and decreases with decrease in temperature. Effect of pressure on solubility. Increase in pressure increases the solubility, whereas decrease in pressure decreases the solubility of gas in liquid. Solubility of sugar. Take water in a beaker and go on adding sugar in it till you get saturated solution. Now, put the beaker on the flame and add a few more crystals of sugar in it. What do you notice? You will find that sugar crystals which were added also dissolve. Go on adding more sugar in the solution 
till it is not able to dissolve any more quantity of sugar. Why was the solution able to dissolve more sugar on heating? It is because the solubility of sugar in water increases on heating.